Hey, what's up you guys? Nick Quintero here. And today I'm gonna to show you how I turn one of my iPad illustrations into a vector t-shirt design. Perfect. All right, so this is a drawing that I did on my iPad Pro in Procreate, and I used some of their default brushes to get these textures, but I also used some uh, like wash texture brushes to do some of this stroke work up here on top. This is one of my top selling designs on my Society6 page. So I wanted to kind of give it a refreshing look and update it and give it just like a, a nice clean vector style so that I can use it on t-shirts in my tea Public store as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just click and drag this illustration layer over into my Illustrator file that I have behind it. The first thing I'm going to do is click here for my alignment tools and just align to the artboard so it's right in the center. And then I'm going to double click my layer one, check template. So you can see it'll automatically dim my images to 50%. And I'm going to go ahead and name this cowgirl illustration. If you saw my last video, I did not name my layers and I had to do it at the end. And that's not what you want to do. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Call this layer vector. All right. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because I wanted to show you how I take something that's pretty rough like something I would make in Procreate because I like to use the brushes that have a lot of texture and I like to make sure that my, my lines and my strokes are really natural when I'm drawing in there because I want to achieve a nice like hand-drawn look. But in Illustrator, I like to make things kind of, you know, a little bit smoother. I'm gonna use the pen tool and kind of trace over these shapes that I have here. But the thing is, some of these are a little bit like wonky and weird. There's a lot of extra grainy bits and things that came over with those brushes. And I'm actually just going to ignore those. And I'm gonna take a lot of liberties on this illustration so that you can see how I will make this into like a completely different version of it so that it's clean and smooth with um, the vector graphics I can get in Illustrator. So there's a lot of different ways to use the pen tool. And I'm gonna show you the ways that I use it to make my workflow super fast. I'm using Illustrator 2020 right now, and there is a great feature in here that was only introduced recently, maybe a couple versions back. But what you can do is actually bend a straight line directly with the pen tool by holding Option. So a lot of these like curved lines that I'm going to be tracing, you'll see that I actually make them straight lines first, and then I use the curve feature to make it the shape that I want it to be. Now I'll start here on this eye and eyebrow to show you what I mean, because it's really, really simple. So I'm just going to click with my pen tool to create one point. Then I'm gonna drag over here to this other side and create another point. And then click up here on that point and then come back around to this one and create this nice little polygon shape. Now I'm gonna hit D to pick my default colors and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna click backslash to clear out my color here to transparent. All right, so making sure I have the pen tool selected, I'm gonna hold option and you'll see that when you hover over a line that you created, this new icon pops up. Now this allows you to just keep holding option and click and select this path and curve it to whatever shape you want. Now, if you just move this around, you can really see how it goes, but I'm just going to line it up as close as I can to this original piece here. And if you move left or right, you can see how the path shifts so that you can trace this exactly how you want. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this line here so that I can click on this point and pick it back up. And I'm just going to create a nice, simple, straight line shape around this area here to get the basic idea and outline of what I'm gonna be doing here. Okay, so now that I have this whole thing closed, I'm gonna go in and make my curves just like I did on that first line. So I'm gonna hold option and I'm gonna click and drag these lines until they follow the general idea 
of these shapes that I made originally. All right, now you see how I have these sharp corners here on this part, but this line isn't necessarily very sharp. That's because I'm gonna use the rounded corner tool. So if you select any point that has a sharp corner, you'll see that this little handlebar comes up here and it allows you to just pull it and curve that line as far as you want. Now you can take it all the way in or you can make it really tight and small, but I'm just trying to follow this line. So that works for me. I think I'm actually gonna curve this one a little bit too, even though the original drawing didn't really have a curve right there. All right, so I'm just gonna use the ellipse tool to create the circles for these eyes here. And I'm gonna hold option while I click and drag this circle over here to just make a duplicate of it. And if you watch my shortcuts video, you would see all of these um, simple letters that I'm clicking to select these tools. All right, cool. So that's there. Now let's go ahead and do this shape here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the ellipse again to get it close to this shape here because since I am taking so much liberty, it doesn't really matter if it's exact or not. All right, so I'm gonna do these lips. I'm gonna hit this sharp corner first, then I'm gonna click and drag on my pen tool to get a little bit of that curve there. And then I'm gonna come around to this point and pull it down or up so that I get that. And I'm gonna go ahead and curve this top lip as well. So I have as much control as I want. And then, and then follow this back around to close it there. All right, I'm gonna leave this line straight because I'm gonna create this curve when I'm drawing this bandana. So let's go ahead and start down here on this sharp point. Um, I'm gonna use that point, this one. If you're used to just creating, you know, curves with the pen tool in the original like classic way that it works, this might be a little confusing, but to me, it's worth the learning curve, uh, no pun intended, because it just really makes things go so much faster. I am gonna go ahead and click on this point here just to make sure that all of that stuff is meeting in the same place. I'm gonna just bring this around here and maybe just close that off sharp right there. And then I'll pull these curves. And this one, I'm gonna have to take a little bit more liberties because it is a little dusty and, and you know, very distressed over here on these edges. But I do want to make sure that this one crosses that point as close as possible because it'll help me out a lot when I start using my shape builder. See, if you learned how to use the pen tool the old way, this would seem like such a weird counterintuitive way to make this shape here by just doing this triangle. But if you really take the time to get used to it, I mean, that's so worth it. I mean, look at how easy it is to get that path so close to where it needs to be. And especially if you're taking liberties like I am, I mean, it, it's, it's a no brainer. All right, so now I'm gonna use the uh, shape builder tool. So what you wanna do is select all of your paths. I use Command A, and then I use Shift M to go to the Shape Builder. Now you've probably seen this in a lot of like um, behind the scene videos of people making logos. 
And there's a lot of videos of people, you know, creating like tons of different, you know, circles and overlapping them. And then, you know, you'll just see this crazy whole mess of weird circles and things. And then all of a sudden they start deleting things inside of it. And then it becomes, you know, like the Twitter bird or something weird. So this is the tool that they use to do that. So again, select all and shift M. So basically what this does is it'll start to auto select different parts and pieces where they overlap. And what you can do is merge or subtract these pieces automatically. And I'll show you what I mean. So you see how this plus icon comes up here on my cursor. Basically, if I start to click and drag across two paths, when I let go, it'll just merge them automatically. So I have these overlapping shapes here. I'm just going to click and drag between them both and create a solid shape. All of those weird overlapping shapes that I had are all looking how they're supposed to look now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and undo my template layer here so that it unlocks. I'm gonna pull my cowgirl drawing over there. And now you can select these individual shapes and I'm just gonna use the eyedropper. So Illustrator has Pantones built into it as swatches, and uh, I have mine ready to go usually at all times here. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now you have this nice, clean vector design and you can send this off to your printer and they can use this just as is. The last step will be to go ahead and mock this up on a t-shirt and hopefully spell some things correctly. So I'm going to use my Photoshop template for a flat lay t-shirt mock-up. All right, so that is how I take my illustrations and convert them into vector t-shirt designs. So if you guys like this tutorial and you want to see more and you want access to things like my Photoshop t-shirt template, the fonts that I make, and a lot of other content, please go subscribe to my Patreon page. As a patron, you get access to all of that stuff immediately, depending on the tier that you sign up for. Uh, if you sign up for as little as $5 a month, you can start getting access to the fonts immediately. If you do $10 a month, then you can get access to my Photoshop templates. And if you sign up at any level, you'll get access to all of my tutorials a week early. And you'll also be able to have access to ask me questions and suggest more content for more upcoming videos. All right. Thank you guys so much. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below and let me know what websites you like to use to sell your t-shirt designs. All right. Thanks you guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.